The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the easiest way to do a correct hose change on the D-Laval VMS milk sampler. You will receive a hose change kit in the mail from your district manager and inside you will find two rubber gaskets, small and large, and three lengths of hose. Okay, it's important to recognize that these are three different lengths and uh, thicknesses of hose, I should say. So we have the small one that's quite obvious, the spaghetti or milk line, and then we have two that look very similar, but one is a larger diameter and a thicker hose than the other, okay? You will also need a pair of scissors or a sharp knife. And I suggest when you're doing these teardowns, if you are unfamiliar with how to do the hoses and where they go, do them piece by piece. Take off one hose at a time and replace it so that you don't get mixed up as to what goes where because that is very easy to do. And when you're done, I also suggest keeping the old um, gaskets and hosing as, as used spares in case of emergency. We change these hoses very regularly to keep them in good working order, but often the hoses are still quite usable. And if you're on farm and run into a problem, it's great to have spares, okay? The first hose that I'll talk about changing is the small spaghetti line that goes from the bottom of the canister through the pinch valve onto the reel and into the backside of the sampler where the sample is dropped into the bottles. I would recommend having a piece of flexible wire, which you feed in from the sample side, over the reel in the back, which I will show you a close-up of. And then using this to feed, using this flexible wire to feed the spaghetti hose back to the far side. Lacking this, you could make do with the old spaghetti hose. You would unhook it from the bottom of the sample receiver jar, unhook it from the pinch valve and feed it out of the reel. Then feed the new hose onto the reel, as I will demonstrate momentarily. Tie in the two hoses together and use that to pull to the back side. So here's my suggestion. Make sure when you are feeding the spaghetti hose onto the reel that you spin it several times. I recommend at least six to eight rotations to have enough spring tension on the reel so that it will hold the entire length of the spaghetti line. So you're looking for the inlet Feed the spaghetti line through there and it needs to be fed through from this side. It will not work to do it backwards, okay? Then you want to approximate the amount of length that you will need and allow the reel to slowly feed the spaghetti line on. You will know if you spun it enough times because you will get to the end and still have tension on your reel, okay? At this point, I'm going to either tie into my flexible cord or tie into the old spaghetti line and pull it back through to the other side. And here you'll feed it to the back side Detach it from your flexible cord or untie it from the old spaghetti hose, whichever method you chose. Feed it round the reel. It's a little sticky in here. It doesn't always want to go. Lots of friction. And then on to the needle. You'll want to feed it on at least half a centimeter. Um, preferably more like a centimeter if you can get it to go, but there's a lot of friction on this. I also recommend having a little water. You could wet down the hose as well as the, the needle and that would make it a little easier. There we go. And that is how you do this side. For the next step, you're going to take the two remaining hoses and you will need the larger of the two. So the one with the thicker walls and the, and the heavier hose, okay? This hose runs from the canister lid. Now make note, you have two different openings on the canister lid. One is a little smaller and one's a little larger. So the larger hose goes on the larger opening on the canister lid. You wanna make sure you get that on by at least half an inch. 
I recommend using some water, wet down the metal and wet down the hose. It makes it a little easier to slide on. Heat helps as well. Try not to do this in cold weather. Cold barn or cold garage makes it much harder to do. The lid's going to sit like so. And then the hose is going to run from the top of the canister lid into the pinch valve. Point we want just enough slack that'll sit nicely and from there it's going to run down to the drain so approximately this length here is where i'm going to cut that off this should be the only hose you have to cut and this is why i said make sure you have a pair of scissors or a sharp knife with you because you want a nice clean cut at which point i'm going to use some water wet down the hose because it really does make it much easier to slide onto the metal if it's been moistened a little and then just slide that onto the drain opening like so and slide it down approximately half half of an in, inch there if you can get that far but even just on a centimeter would do because this hose is not under any significant amount of pressure because this is a drain hose okay the remaining length of hose that you cut off to create the drain line this is going to be the milk line that comes from the robot and brings the milk over into the canister so it will attach to the top of the lid on the smaller opening. So again, just wet down your hose with some water. Makes it a little easier to slide on. You can even wet down the top of the canister lid as well just to make it that much easier to slide on. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that gets on there at least, like I said, half, half of an inch, perhaps even a little more because this metal opening is smaller than the other one so it's more likely to come off but that will do and then the length of the hose just feeds through the top of the lid and this is the one that goes to the robot to bring the milk over to the canister at this point you should have one hose remaining this is the medium sized of the three different hoses you received this is the milk return line so the milk return line attaches to the coupler to bring the milk back to the robot. You'll want to wet down the line and wet down the coupler just a little bit and then slide this hose on. This hose needs to have either a spring that keeps it on or you'll have to ha uh, use a zip tie if your spring has been lost. This sampler I'm working with here has missing some springs. So we've got some being ordered. And in the meantime, we'll put a zip tie on here just to make sure that stays on tight. But perfect world, you should be using the springs that come with the samplers. But occasionally going down the road, these pieces get lost on farm. But we try to avoid that as much as possible. So you'll want to make sure you change out the old rubber gaskets for the new ones. And um, at this point, it would be good to check to make sure we're not missing any pieces. You should be able to rattle this and hear the ball that's inside here. This prevents milk and, and sand and things like that from flowing the wrong direction when you don't want it to, particularly debris like sand. Um, so you'll have that metal bracket in there that holds it in place. And you should be able to hear that rattle. So you're gonna put the new gasket on and we'll just attach the clamp keep pieces together so they don't get lost. Spin that down here. And there we go. And this end of the hose is completed with. At the other end, this is going to feed from the outside of the sampler unit. I'm gonna feed that in, down through the metal bracket, there we go, we'll just give ourselves lots of length to work with here. And this is going to attach to the bottom of the milk receiver jar. So once again, a little water is very helpful. Put a little on your finger and onto the sampler jar. And we're just going to feed that on. Now remember, we need to use the spring or if your kit is missing the spring, then make sure you use a zip tie or some other attachment to make sure the hose stays on snug. These springs are really important though, so if you're missing any of them, please let your district manager know so we can get new parts ordered, okay? 
You're just gonna wanna feed that hose on there at least, again, half an inch and have the spring here to prevent it from binding and also to keep it firmly attached and not coming off during the heat of the wash cycle or the heat of the milk exiting the jar, okay? Now, I'm gonna do this one more time because we need this to feed through correctly. So this bracket is solid and it needs to feed back in. So make sure you put it through after it's been put through the bracket properly. So feed that hose on a good ways, grab your spring, bring that up and then feed that on. Now just watch, because remember the spring has to have an end point. So when you're trying to get the spring on, turning the spring is helpful, but don't turn it so that the pointy part is pushing into the silicone hose, because it'd be very easy to create a hole while doing so, so rotate the opposite way. It'd be very easy to create a hole in the line, and even a small hole in the line can reduce the air pressure in the system and prevent it from working correctly. So there, we have the line properly attached and we're able to put the system back together. So that's gonna sit in there. This is gonna wrap around through the pinch valve. And then just take up the slack and just like this. Afterwards, we'll take the larger of the rubber gaskets. This is gonna fit on here. Now remember, there are knobs on both the lid and the receiver jar. These knobs need to line up correctly and then sit just nicely in the corner of the clamp. If they're not in the corner of the clamp, the clamp doesn't always seal the jar 100%. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, even a small amount of air loss can cause the system to not work correctly. Okay, final piece. We wanna make sure we get the spaghetti line hooked up to the bottom of the sampler jar. If this D sampler was going to a v V300 series robot, you could skip this step. It wasn't going to a classic because at which point you would not have it attached to the bottom of the receiver jar and you would feed it out the opening by the drain so it can hook directly up to the pump on the V300. However, I'm gonna set this up today as if it was going to a classic robot and we will need this spaghetti line hooked up to the bottom of the canister jar which point we're just gonna put everything back together, tie it on the rubber gasket, seat the lid correctly, lining up the notches or the knobs, put the knobs in the corner of the clamp, snug up the clamp, nice and snug here. Remember, even a small air loss in this system will not work correctly. Seat the milk return line in its pinch valve checking the length that it's gonna work okay. Check to make sure that the spaghetti line is seated correctly in its pinch valve. The drain is attached, seated correctly in its pinch valve, not pinched anywhere that it shouldn't be pinched. And there you go. Now we're ready to start a milk test.